and go before the Lord in prayer this evening. Gracious God, we love you and we thank you, Lord. We're giving you all the praise, glory, and honor because it's due to you. God, we know, Lord, that you're in control of all things, Lord. And Lord, there's nothing that's going on that you don't know about. Lord, we thank you for your power to set us free, your power to heal, your power to love, Lord. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Why don't we go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap off for this evening. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to sing that song, He Set Me Free.
glorify him, praise him, take time and just say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me a home in heaven. Begin to think about the mansion he's prepared for you. Begin to get your hearts on those things that are above tonight. Oh, Lord, we love you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies, Lord, your loving kindness. Oh, God, we were unworthy. We were on our way to hell. But, Jesus, you stepped in the gap, Lord. You tasted death for every man. Oh, God, we love you, God, this evening. We thank you for your mercies. Oh, God, have your way, Lord, in each life. God, move in the midst of our service tonight. Lord, pour your spirit out one more time. Oh, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. The saints of God said amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, you may be seated. We'd like to welcome each and every one to God's house. Amen. Looking forward to God moving in our midst tonight. Yes. Amen. Just go ahead and jump in. Get what you have need of. Amen. Forget what you got going on outside of the church. Let's just get involved in the service tonight. And let's see God move in our lives. Amen. I'd like to ask Sister Priscilla, man, if you'll stand and say something good for God. That is good tonight. And we got a good God living in us. You know, he makes us good. Amen. We're not, we're not through yet. Amen. He's still working on us, perfecting us, yeah. removing, our, removing our imperfections. But I'm thankful tonight, amen, that I'm on the winning team and God has no castaways. Amen. God does not have throwaways. Amen. Amen. He thought we were worth it. Amen. And I'm thankful tonight yeah. Yeah. to be a part of the winning team. At this time, we'd like to wait on you. For the Thursday night tithe and offering. Amen. We appreciate your gift and your giving. Amen. Your offering, amen, goes to meet the needs of God's program. Amen. amen. I'm thankful for the lights. I'm thankful for all these things. And we don't do it but to get something from God. But we do it, amen, because God is good. Yes. He's good, amen. And all the time, he's good. Oh. Like that sister Everett, man, if you'll pray for the gift and giver tonight. Gracious Lord, we thank you and we love you, Lord. We're asking tonight that you will bless both the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
but after the spirit. Uh -huh. We're blameless, amen? Yeah. That's a blessing. I'm beginning to look at my old life and all the lies I told and everything I stole and everything yeah. I smoked and everything I drunk and Come on. hey, the list goes on and on. <laughs> you said so many times I kind of lost count. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so did God. Yeah. Amen. If you're in Christ, God has lost count. Amen. If you're walking after the Spirit tonight, God has lost count. Amen. I'm not talking about greasy grace. I'm talking about forgiveness yeah. and having power to live above sin. Yeah. That's great salvation. Tonight, I want to turn your attention to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30. One verse of scripture here in our Bible reading. We'll be taking our text verse from another place. We usually don't do that. Kind of gets confusing. It's more clean to get your text from the Bible said, but it's fitting tonight. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We want to use Psalms 55 verse 22 for our text verse. Psalms 55 verse 22 for our text verse tonight. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, yeah. and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself, and the Lord is God. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. With the help of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, and your help tonight, we want to preach on a message entitled, Push. Yes. Push. Yes. Sister, remember, we feel pray for the message messenger and those who are listening tonight. Lord, we humbly come before you and we thank you, Jesus, just for who you are and all that you've done and all that you will do. We ask that tonight you will move by the Holy Spirit, touch each heart, each mind, Lord. Help us to push through each and every situation in life until we meet you face to face and hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We also ask tonight that you will be with Pastor God, your servant, Lord. Help him, Jesus, to lift you up high that you may draw all men near. We're asking these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All we got to do tonight is one thing, according to our text verse. We do one thing. Our text verse lets us know that God will do two things. David said, cast thy burden upon the Lord. Yeah. 
If you do that, he'll sustain you and never suffer you to be moved. Church, never is there a promise without a condition. Sometimes as Christians, we often magnify the promises of God and ignore the fine print. I mean, I want to win tonight. I want to win in life. If I told you a guaranteed way to win, would you do it? Amen. All right. All we got to do tonight is build our life on one word. That word is the title of, of our message tonight. All we got to do is build our lives on the word push. All we have to do is build our lives on the word push. David in our text verse tells us to push. He said, basically, pray until something happens. Mm -hmm. Don't play until something happens, <laughs> but pray until something happens. Mm -hmm. He said, cast your burden upon the Lord. Amen. Not upon yourself, but cast your burden tonight upon the Lord. What does it mean to cast? It means to throw out. Throw it out. What does it mean to cast? It means to flee. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to cast? It means to throw what's got what what, what uh, uh, to throw your despair at God, amen. To throw your problems in the lap of God. It means to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. David was a man that knew how to push. He cast his burden upon the Lord. He began to throw his problems on God. Mm -hmm. He began to throw his problems on God. The Bible tells us, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag. On the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And you picture this situation, how his men had took off. They went up north, they're, they're, but, but the Amalekites, the enemies, uh, had came in. They had went up north, had, had did a raid themselves, had a great victory. But the Amalekites, as they were doing what they were doing, as, as David and his men were patrolling and, and, and working a victory for God, the enemy came in. Mm -hmm. The enemy came in and began to burn their city down with fire. Now, this is a man, folks, who was on the run, amen? He had been expelled from Jerusalem. He was on the run from his father-in-law, and his father-in-law was trying to kill him. His father-in-law was trying to kill him. Now, to add more insult to injury, there's some in, there was an enemy, enemies, and the enemy has invaded this city that he was in, and they had burned the city with fire. The Bible says they had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. They didn't kill them, but he probably was going to abuse them a little bit. Back in these days, when a woman was captive, as we were talking in our class uh, a couple weeks ago, the enemies would shake their heads to bring about shame. And so these women and these children were held captive. So David and his men came to the city and looked, and behold, it was burned with fire. And the wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. You know, we've got beat so bad by your parents, hey man, you all you can do is... I probably shouldn't be talking about that. You may go to, <laughs> You ever got beat so bad, all you can do, I mean, you ain't have no more tears. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's right. That's no more tears to cry. Yes, they had ran out of tears. Mm -hmm. Have you just wept so much to where you ran out of tears? Mm -hmm. These men had just won a major victory just to come back and find that their city was on fire and their families were enslaved by the enemy. The Bible says David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. It's times like this, folks, when really it's you against the world, amen. Really when you, when you feel like it's you against the world. The Bible says he was greatly distressed. Mm -hmm. You ever felt like you were walking on a tight rope? You ever felt pressed on every side? Mm -hmm. He was greatly distressed. What's he saying? He was about to pop. Mm -hmm. He was pressed. Mm -hmm. 
He could have complained and made matters worse. Or he could have just threw his problems in the lap of God. Yeah. You can complain tonight about what you don't have or what you're going through. Or you can throw your problems in the lap of God. You can complain and gripe and say, well, God, I've been dealt the bad hand. Mm -hmm. Or you can throw your problems and your bad hand in the lap of God. Mm -hmm. When you cast your burden upon the Lord, you're throwing him what's weighing you down. Mm -hmm. When you cast your burden upon the Lord, remember I told you the word cast needs to flee it, to get rid of it, to throw it away, yeah. to throw it out violently. When you cast your burden upon the Lord, you're throwing out what's weighing you down violently upon God. Amen. Forcefully. I'm here telling you tonight, if you cast all your burdens to God, you can get victory over your fears. You can triumph over unbelief. Jesus said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own. And shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Folks, it's times like this, amen, where it's just me and God, amen. It's times when we're up against the wall, so to speak. When we're pressed on every side. When we feel we, we don't feel like going any further, amen. Where it's just us and God, amen. God is really trying to get us, amen, to realize, amen, you're not alone tonight, amen. The Father is with you, amen. He's trying to get us to a higher level, amen. Man, he don't want you to stay where you're at tonight. He wants to elevate you, amen. He wants to give you the increase, amen. But you got Learn how to cast your burdens upon him. Amen. He said, Everybody's leaving me. Jesus felt what it was like to be lonely. He was on his way to the cross. He knew everybody. He knew the people he took care of was going to forsake him. Mm -hmm. The people he worked miracles, uh, 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 the people that he performed miracles on was going to tell Pilate to crucify him. Crucify him. I don't doubt in my mind, amen, that it was some people, amen, that said crucify him. He perhaps had healed, amen, perhaps had touched. Maybe that family members were impacted, amen. He said, you may forsake me, amen, but I'm not alone, amen. God, he's with me, amen. I still got a proud life, amen. There's still hope, amen. God is still in me, amen. Christ in me, amen. He's still the hope of glory tonight, amen. There's still an expected end tonight, amen. I'm thankful tonight, amen. Yeah, the world, amen. There may be a president at times in the world, amen. But it's, it's, it's God knows what's going on, amen. God knows all about what you're going through, amen. amen. Now, perhaps there has been a problem tonight, amen, that has baffled the mind of God. God ain't up in heaven tonight, amen, scratching his head, trying to figure out how he's going to sustain you. He's already telling you the answer tonight. He said, cast your burden, amen. Cast your cares upon him who truly cares for you, amen. The have said the devil, yeah, he goes about like a roaring lion, amen, seeking whom he may devour, amen. But I'm thankful, amen, that there's another in the fire with Tonight, amen. I'm thankful tonight for the fourth man in the fire tonight, amen. No, my problems may grip me, amen. No people may not like me, amen. No, this one may have some against me, amen. There's a God in heaven tonight that don't have none against me tonight. There's a God in heaven tonight that's made me blank. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. The reason people don't have peace is because they don't know what God has spoken to them. Peace means undisturbed rest in your soul. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus is letting us know the reason he penned it, amen. The reason he penned the scripture is not for us, amen, not to have peace, not for us to be distressed, amen. It's for us to be, uh, uh, to be blessed, amen, for us to be happy, amen. He wants to give us peace, amen, not what the world can give, amen. That passes away. You know how that is. Everybody in here probably drunk a little before, amen, or smoked something before, amen. That ain't the kind of peace he's talking about tonight. He's talking about that inward fellowship with God. It's something about, folks, I don't know about you, but it's something about when I touch the hand of God in a prayer meeting, amen, or I begin to read the word of God till the scales fall off my eyes and say, oh God, that's what you've been trying to tell me all along, amen. You've been trying to tell me to cast my burden upon you. You've been trying to tell me to cast my anxiety upon you, upon you amen. You've been trying to tell me, amen, that you will sustain me. Yes. That's right. You've been trying to tell me. You said in the world you shall have tribulation. It will be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world we're going to go through things. Mm -hmm. There's hope. He said be a good cheer. 
I've overcome. If I can just stay in Jesus until God removes all the quit out of my life. Yes. All the fears out of my life. Yes. I haven't arrived. Come on. God, if I can just stay in you, amen, and not to doubt you when I'm going through it, who will or not? And, and, and to keep trusting you when I'm going through it, amen. Not just when I'm when my life is blessed on that all side and I ain't going through nothing, amen. I'm saying, folks, it's easy to serve God when everything's preaching and cream, amen. But I know some people in here tonight, amen, that have been through many afflictions, amen. They've been through many adversities, amen. But they keep going, amen. They keep going, amen. They keep going, amen. What did they say? They said they, they trusted in God. They cast their tails upon God. And he's sustaining them tonight. Keep going and going to get tough. Yes. When the devil wants to shake your faith. Come on. When the devil wants to see you to hell. You ever, you ever been going through something and you feel like the devil's literally trying to see you to hell? Amen. Anybody ever been through something like that? Maybe, maybe a doubting, man. Maybe unbelief. Maybe some, some kind of seed he planted, amen, amen. that wasn't plucked down in the mind, amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, amen. Just cast that seed upon God, amen. Dig that thing out, amen. Pull it out. Weeds, amen. It's easy to pull out with Jesus. When Jesus is in your life, amen. It'll pull up just like a weed, amen. But he got something better than weed kill, amen. He got the old working cross, amen. He killed Satan. But when the old working cross tonight, he's for Satan and his personal tonight. Oh, yeah. Praise God. It's better than weed kill. You know, weed kill it only lasts a little while. That's it. Amen. We preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified to those that believe it's the power of salvation, amen. It's the power of salvation, amen. That's power in the name of Jesus. That's dynamite in the name of Jesus, amen. I can destroy any wall that's in my life when I'm into it, Jesus is, when Jesus is in my life. Amen. He was saying, Jesus was saying, as long as I can get in contact with God. I'm going to be all right. Amen. He later he told them, amen, straight up. Hey, I know y'all going to leave. I'm letting you know. They didn't think they was going to leave. They didn't know they had quit in their lives, amen. That's folks, it's things in our lives, amen. We don't even know, amen. We don't even know ourselves like we need to. That's what we're trying to tell you tonight, amen. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost, amen. You got to let the Holy Ghost cast your cares upon God, amen. Cast your burdens upon God. Everybody ever prayed in the Holy Ghost, amen, to what the Spirit of God released you, amen. You woke up feeling, you got out of Prayer be feeling light, amen. Feeling like you built your most holy faith. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost was praying through you, amen. amen. That's right. But the Holy Ghost prays through you till he releases you. That's it. Talking about real prayer, amen. amen. Not talking about quarter pounder, thank you, Jesus, amen. for the quarter pounder, amen. Uh, 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 the burger and the fries and the milkshake. I'm saying thank you, Jesus, for getting quit out of my life, amen. I'm saying thank you, Jesus, for getting depression out of my life, amen. I'm saying thank you, Jesus, for healing my wife, amen. For healing my life, amen. For touching me in ways that I, I didn't even know I had problems, amen. Psychological trash in my life, amen. Let me tell you something. God will remove every burden from your life when you cast it upon him tonight. Push unto the Lord will sustain. Push unto the Lord sustain me. Cast that burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain me. What does it mean to sustain? It means He'll hold you. Cast your burden upon the Lord, so you can get in the presence of God. He'll hold you. Amen. He'll feed you. What does it mean to sustain? It means He'll feed you. He'll nurture you. What does it mean to sustain? He'll receive you. What does it mean to sustain? He will guide you. Peter said it this way. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee. What was he saying? The same thing, or the same thing in our test verse. Cast your burden upon God so he can sustain you. You can't stop the battle in your life, amen, until you say, God, 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 help me do your will tonight. Amen. All right. That's right. You can't do your will to God will at the same time. Because <laughs> somebody got to lose. Somebody got to get out of the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. God, I'm supposed to believe that you'll guide me, you'll sustain me. Mm -hmm. And my wives are captive. Notice I said wives, not wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two of them. Preacher, it's just no scene found me. It's the Old Testament. You're on the new contract. You want to go, go to the old contract? You want to live in a capital of polygamy and all these things going on? You have to go out in the, in the whole left. New contract. You don't want that kind of problem. No problems in your life. We got a new contract. God allowed certain things in the old, but he didn't green light. That's never, that, that was never God's intention. 
never really what he wanted. He had to rightly divide the scriptures. Amen. 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 Or you'll go into error. Certain things God didn't even say. I mean, God didn't say anything about murder during the days of Adam because nobody killed nobody. Hmm. <laughs> Until Cain killed somebody, killed his brother. And so, welcome to a new country. Better promises. Yes. Right. God replies, He tells us, amen, mm -hmm. that you only need one wife, Bishop. Yeah. Come on. You tell us, amen? Not your girlfriend, your wife. Okay, let's keep going. He said, My kids and my wives have been enslaved by the enemy. Mm -hmm. God, I'm supposed to trust you. The six hundred men that you've given me want to kill me. How can I pray until something happens? Mm -hmm. I got these men that want to kill me. Yeah. My family is held hostage. Mm -hmm. You ever been by water and you trying to pray? Man, I, hey, I'll tell you, I'll be like that sometimes when I'm going through something. I'm like, God, you got to pray through me. Yeah. Hey, you got the strength to yeah, pray. Come on. That's right. That is so true. <laughs> I'm spiritually zapped. Yeah. God, I don't even have the strength to pray. Yeah. God, I need your strength. Yeah. Yes. I don't even have the words to, to conjure up. Amen. God, I need you to pray through me. Come on, man. I need you to help me. That's right. David could have shipped but He could have said to the men, it's not my fault. I didn't tell y'all to come out here. Y'all, God put it in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Remember, David was on a run. He, he, he left Jerusalem by himself. But God began to deal with these men's hearts, amen, and he began to send people David's way. Yeah. Come on. Just because you're in the will of God don't mean that everything's going to be gravy. That's it. That's it. That don't mean everything's going to be just hunky-dory. Uh -huh. Can we all get along type deals? We still don't go through things. Yes. But I believe as a church, we can make it together. Make it. I believe if we unify the church, amen, and believe the same word of God, and believe the same Holy Ghost baptism, I believe we can get a lot done in Portland, Oregon. Amen. God ain't through with Portland yet. No, he's not. He could have gave them a piece of his mind. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. To encourage means to strengthen, to help, to force. You gotta help yourself tonight. Amen. You gotta encourage yourself in the Lord. You gotta at least start. He said he helped himself in the Lord. God can't get you in his presence, amen, without you you put some skin in the game. God could have made David pray. He dealt with his heart or whatever, but David had to help himself. Amen. David had to strengthen himself. If he went one mile, God would go two. I got one or two. <laughs> if he went one mile, God would go two. I told you tonight, amen, if you cast your burden upon the Lord, God will do two things. He will sustain thee, he will guide thee, and he also, amen, will not suffer the righteous to be moved. Mm -hmm. It takes real spiritual matur maturity to encourage yourself in the Lord. When your problems are getting at you, when your own people are mad at you to the point they want to kill you, when your two wives are in captivity, <laughs> think about it, folks. All these things attacking this man. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he had begun to get depressed. Mm -hmm. Put your mind for a little bit. He's already on the run. He's not even in his hometown. Mm -hmm. He's in this city called Ziklag. He's marching back with 600 men that God had given him mm -hmm. to see the city on fire. Look at the city on fire. Mm -hmm. His wives and their wives and their kids are captive by the enemy. Maybe he felt like, God, just take my life. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes people get that depressed. Yeah. God, Amen. I don't want to live no more. Amen. Maybe he was heartbroken. But then he began to have some self-talk. How many of you had self-talk? Mm -hmm. Talk to yourself. Maybe he had some self-talk. Maybe he began to say, well, there's only one way I can get out of this mess. I could go back and forth with them. But they don't need that kind of leader. God, you didn't send them here, amen, for me to be arguing back and forth with them, amen. You sent me here to lead them, amen, to guide them, amen, to be a blessing, amen. So I'm not going to go back and forth with you, fellas. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove myself from the situation. I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to force myself to do something I know the flesh don't want to do. I know the devil don't want me to do, amen. But I'm going to do it anyway, amen, because that's only one solution, amen. The only solution for the battle tonight, amen, it's for us to help ourselves, 
amen, and are running the presence of Almighty God tonight and let him strengthen us. Yes, he was greatly distressed. Yes, the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. But rather going back and forth, that man said, I'm going to connect with God. How many of them did that? Mm -hmm. Rather going back and forth. This is going to make you and another person mad. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than going back and forth, he said, I'm just going to go to God and tell God all about it. Man, if you tell your daddy about it, man, God, man, God ain't finna let you, amen. He ain't finna let the devil just play with you like that. No, he ain't finna let the, the, his enemies play with him like that, amen. amen. That's, that's your heavenly father tonight. Don't you take care of your kids? Don't you get married with your kids getting picked on? Yeah, man. All right. Well, so it was, amen, or so it is with God. God wasn't finna let, amen, these folks stone his man, the man that was after his own heart, amen. amen. God had called David not for him to be a failure, but, uh, but, but for him to be a success. God has called you tonight, amen, not to leave you the same, amen. He's trying to work on you, amen. He's trying to encourage you tonight, amen. He believes that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. We're strengthening you tonight. Yes. You got to help yourself. Yes. Yes. Jesus promised that he would give us another comfort. That he may abide with you forever. Amen. He said, e even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. amen. God said this, folks. He said, I, I didn't save you, amen, to leave you like a red-headed stepchild, amen. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, amen. You ain't an orphan, amen, if you're a child of God tonight, amen. He has the Holy Ghost for you tonight, amen. He has what you need to sustain you tonight, amen. God will God and all the truth, don't tell you, folks, we gotta cast our burden yes. upon him. Yes. Amen. He said after his resurrection, these beautiful words, Lo, he said, Lo, the word Lo means look in a chamber. He said, Look, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world, amen. amen. God is with you in the fire tonight, amen. God is with you when the distressed times, amen. God is with you, amen, in these quote unquote unprecedented times. Let me tell you, amen, the same God that was with you yesterday, amen, is with you today, amen. He'll be with you tomorrow, amen. He'll be with you all the way until the end of the world tonight. Amen. Amen. You gotta pray until something amen. happens. God promises to sustain those that cast their burdens on him. He said he'll never suffer the righteous to be moved. Now, you may not believe this, amen, but we're traveling in outer space right now. Come on. The world is literally rotating right now. You feel anything? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, this is an earthquake or something like that. Hey, well, check this out. God is trying to get us all to the point, amen, when we're going through things, it's just like the world's just rotating. The world's keep spinning, amen. As the world turns, amen, you'll leave me watching that jump anyway, amen. But as the world turns, amen, God is still working for me, amen. As the world turns, amen, as I'm going through things, amen, God is still with me, amen. Always, amen. I said always tonight, amen. Even in a situation, I'm saying, what can separate us from the love of God, amen? Can people separate us from the love of God, amen? Can coronavirus separate us from the love of God, amen? Nothing, just separate us of God tonight. God will always open doors when prayers, when people pray. God will always open doors when people pray until something happens. God will always, I've never seen God fail when people pray until something happens. Now, I, I, I didn't see God come through when people quit. <laughs> I didn't see him come through then. But when people pray until something happens, I mean, folks, God, he already said in his word, let us not be weary and well-doing for a new season. You shall reap if you faint not. Amen. Get your strength from God today if you're feeling weary, amen. Stop worrying about Facebook, amen. Get in God's book. Stop worrying about your problems, amen. Cast them upon the lap of God tonight. I'm saying God will sustain you. He'll never suffer the righteous to be moved. But you gotta pray until something happened tonight. David had to pray until something happened. You know, folks, our payday's coming. I'm going to believe that. Amen. I'm going to believe payday's coming. Amen. Payday's coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I, payday's coming. I just don't want to be somewhere else, amen, when, when God deposits my check. Come on. I want to make sure the account number's right, amen, so to speak. The spiritual account number, the uh, spiritual account number, right, amen. The physical account number, right, amen. I want to make sure everything's correct, and we keep pushing, amen, with the right attitude, the right attitude in life, amen. To get you a long way, amen. Your attitude really determines how far you're gonna go, amen. How far you're gonna grow, amen. Grow in the word of God, love the word of God, seek the word of God, love God with all your heart, all your mind, amen. Let God keep you tonight, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They had found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. 
and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. And David asked the fella, where are you from? Now this is all in the set. Remember he encouraged himself in the Lord. He, strength, he helped himself. He didn't go to the government, did he? Anybody in there can get witness? He didn't go to the government to help himself. I know, the government can't help themselves. Get the government right now. I thank God for the government. Thank God for all these checks and stuff like that that come in. I'm going to take that. Come in. Right. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Check this out. They found an Egyptian in the field. And they brought the fellow to David. And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me because three days ago, three days ago, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. Wait a minute. This sounds like the fellow I need. You see how God got you? Yeah. You see how he'll sustain you? How he'll guide you? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. If he had quit, he wouldn't help out the Egyptian fellow. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I got an insult. Somebody was actually in on it. Uh -huh. Now check this out. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? Now, this is a fellow who master had left him for dead. He said, I got to bring all things out for those who love him. And then call according to his purpose. Amen. David said, Can you bring me down now to where they, 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 they at? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee down to this company. Let me say this. If you don't get rid of all your enemies, they're going to come back and destroy you. Yeah, oh, that's right. If you don't get rid of all your enemies, all your problems, cast them upon God, they're going to come back and destroy you. Yeah, they will. The Amalekites were the enemies of God. Have you ever had somebody in your life that was a thorn in your flesh? <laughs> this is what the Amalekites were to Israel. God had plainly instructed Saul, the king, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, to utterly destroy all the Amalekites. Why? Because when Israel was leaving Egypt, the Amalekites tried to get them killed. They tried to kill them. When they was weak, it was a weak nation. They weren't even an established nation in that sense. They just had the promises of God. They didn't have, they was on their way to the promised land. And the Amalekites took advantage of them. The Amalekites had fought with Israel and rebelled them, and Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with the Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, Ur, went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So you got to keep your hands up. You got to keep your hands up. You need to keep your hands in the word of God. You need to keep your hands on the rock, amen. Yeah. You see, we got to keep our hands up. We got to do it how God wants. And then the Bible says, but Moses' hands were heavy, and they took the stone. They tied the night, tied the doing in their own strength, rest on the rock. Take that stone, amen, like Moses did. He took the stone, amen, and put it under, amen, and then he, and then he sat there on. And Aaron and Earth stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You can't do it by yourself, amen. That's why the brothers and sisters in this thing with you, amen. He took Aaron and his brother, amen. Aaron got one side, Ur got the other side, amen. We got everything we need tonight. We got more than enough people to overcome, amen, and defeat the, the old slot of the enemy in Portland, Oregon, amen. If you're tired tonight, amen, get in the rock, amen. You're still tired. Get a brother and sister in there involved with you, amen, in the prayer meeting, amen, in the prayer closet, amen. The Bible says, Joshua, he does uh, this comfort in Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. What's the word this comfort mean? That means he put, beat the brakes off him, amen. Let me tell you something tonight, amen, with God in my life. I'll beat the brakes off the devil. I don't care what I'm going through tonight, amen. The victory's already mine, amen, on the matter of blood. Look at the cross, amen. Jesus ain't on there, amen. Jesus is up in heaven tonight, amen. I'm saying he's up in heaven tonight. He's making an intercession for us. I can just count the devil. Yes, right. You got to believe that God is in control. And so he told Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in, in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek, uh, Amalek from under the, under heaven. God wanted Saul to destroy all the Amalekites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Saul, he failed. Yeah. The king that God picked failed. Why? Did God fail? No, Saul failed. Saul got lifted up. Saul forgot who raised him. Yeah. Saul forgot who took care of him. 
And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, saw them, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. That's not what God said to you can't freestyle your own religion. You can't just say, oh, God, I'm kind of doing it. I, I know how to do everything you told me to do. Partial dis disobedience is the same thing as disobedience. Yeah, yeah. God told him to wipe everybody out. If you don't get rid of them enemies in your life, they will destroy you. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatness and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that they, utterly, uh, that they destroyed utterly. You see what happens, amen, when you begin to rationalize and you want something that God don't want you to have, amen? You'll make it sound good. And then Saul, Samuel came to him and said, man, what's going on? You didn't do what God told you to do. He said, yeah, I did. I did everything that God told me to do, amen. But no, he didn't. And God rejected him, amen, for rejecting the word of God. Folks, God God can't accept us, amen, if we don't accept Jesus tonight, amen. God can't accept us, amen, if we don't, uh, if we don't do, it all, do all the work he told us to do, amen. We got to believe from the heart, amen. So I, I believe from the heart, amen, that God is able, amen. He said, who's not calling on the name of the Lord, shall be saved tonight. Amen. You see what happens when you stop praying, when you stop pushing. Mm -hmm. You stop making the Bible say anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was a man who served God. And one part of his life. Evidently, he stopped praying. Yeah. Too busy. Not enough time. Not enough time to pray until something happened. I'm too busy. God, I'm a king. This man's failure caused these 600 men to weep. This man's failure, one man, didn't do what he was supposed to do. Caused these 600 men. Caused their wives and their kids to be captive. Yeah. Because somebody dropped the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody failed. The Bible says that when he had brought him down, the, the Egyptian had brought him down, behold, they, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all, of all the great spoil that had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man saved. The word saved means itself. Except 400 young men which rolled upon camels and fled. You know, somebody had to get away, man, to, to tell about it. To, to tell about it, amen. To get the word out there, amen, that God is still on the throne, amen. How many believe that tonight? God is still on the throne. He's still in control. And I can see David them rushing in there, amen, and his two wives saying, I knew I knew David was going to come through, amen. I knew my husband was some chump, amen. Some fat weather type husband, amen. They probably got all excited, amen. Yeah, that's my husband right there, amen. I told you, he was coming back, devil. He came back and took what you stole from him. I can see it. I can visualize it. Yeah, they had probably was shaved and everything, but he's you know, for the boys. They came in up six hundred deep, worse than or four hundred deep. Some two hundred stayed back with the stuff, amen. For all important tonight, amen. Some of y'all gotta stay back and watch the stuff, amen. Some of y'all gotta go out there on the front lines. Not everybody can be on the front lines, amen. We need support in this thing, amen. But together, amen, we can make it, amen. The devil ain't 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 ain't, ain't, uh, ain't stronger than us, amen. I'm saying, folks, what can separate us from the love of God, amen? What can keep us back? from serving God, amen. He said the gates of hell will not prevail, amen. Let me tell you something. God's going to build his church tonight. Yes. He's going to build his church. The Bible says David recovered everything. He recovered all without fail. That's the great secret tonight. Cast your burden upon God. Don't go back and forth. You don't have to even tell him to wrestle with the devil. This musician begins to come. And you're wasting your time. The guy's an idiot. You go to the advocate, Jesus Christ, and you let him plead your cause. Mm -hmm. You say, God, I need that blood one more time. God, I need that peace in my life. God, I need to feel that connection in my life, God. Oh, I need you to reconcile me one more time. God, I need you to let, let me know from the heart everything's going to be all right. Sometimes you need reassurance. How many know? Amen. Sometimes you just need to know everything's all right. I got a feeling, amen. Everything's going to be all right, amen. One of these days, folks, we're going to see God, amen. We're going to see him for who he is. And the Bible says, no, we're going to look just like him. Amen. Yeah. We're going to see him for who he is. Right. He says, God, continue to cast that burden upon him. Put it out tonight. He'll sustain you. He'll guide you. He's giving you the Holy Ghost. He said, if you feel the Holy Ghost tonight, he's going to guide you in all truth. Folks, this is right. 
This is right before God. And you got to continue to pray until something happens. When I think about one of the sisters, this is her son in 13 years. But she prayed until something happened. Now look, you see how God moves? God is able. That you will see it in the abundant and above all we can ask a thing. Folks, we got to let our heart, our faith get up tonight. Reach up, amen, to the right hand of God and say, God, pull me off, amen, to your level tonight. I'm going to cast my burden upon you as you begin to stand. Why don't we pray, sincerely pray tonight, connect with God, talk to him. Say, God, I need you to sustain me. Don't suffer me to be moved. In Jesus' name, God bless you.